Mr. Uppity was one of the rudest people in the world, if not the rudest. He was rude to anybody and everybody. So, of course, in Big Town, which is where he lived, he had no friends at all. Not one. Miserable old Uppity, they used to call him, and he certainly looked it. Now, as well as being rude, Mr. Uppity was also rich. Very rich. One of the richest people in the world, if not the richest. He had the largest, longest limousine in Big Town. He had the largest, longest garden in Big Town. He had, on the top of a hill in the middle of Big Town, the most enormous house. The biggest house in Big Town. And there he lived, all alone. Miserable old Uppity. One day, Mr. Uppity was walking in the gardens of his enormous house, when suddenly he heard a voice. Hello, said the voice. Mr. Uppity looked, and there, in one of his hundreds of flower beds, was a goblin. Are you not going to say hello to me? said the goblin. Go away, said Mr. Uppity rudely. Oh, I know who you must be, said the goblin. You must be Mr. Uppity, who's rude to everybody. Hmm, sniffed Mr. Uppity rudely. Well, I know somebody who wants to meet you, said the goblin, and he skipped off, the way goblins do. Mr. Uppity's curiosity got the better of him. He followed. In there, said the goblin, pointing at a small hole in a tree. Don't be silly, snorted Mr. Uppity. Oh, oh, I'm not being silly, said the goblin. Yes, you are, snapped Mr. Uppity. I can't possibly get in there. Aha, hee, <laughs> hee, smiled the goblin. And then he said a magic word, known only to goblins, which sounded like wobbling, something like that. Suddenly, Mr. Uppity started shrinking. He shrank and he shrank until he was exactly the same size as the goblin. Turn me back to my proper size at once, spluttered Mr. Uppity in a rage. I shan't, groaned the goblin. And so saying, the goblin climbed through the hole into the tree. Poor Mr. Uppity didn't know what to do, so he followed him. Inside the tree, there was a staircase going down and down. It led directly to the kingdom of the goblins. I demand to be taken immediately to whoever is in charge, said Mr. Uppity angrily. Oh, you shall. So you shall, groaned the goblin. And he led Mr. Uppity through the streets of the kingdom of the goblins until they came to a palace. The goblin and Mr. Uppity passed through the gates and into a courtyard and through some more gates and along a long corridor and through some large gold doors and into a huge room. And there, sitting on a gold throne, was the king of the goblins. Your Majesty, announced the goblin, bowing low. May I present Mr. Uppity? Ah, said the king. So you're the fellow who goes about being rude to everybody and doesn't have any friends. Rubbish, said Mr. Uppity rudely. I can see that what I've heard is true, said the king, looking at the indignant Mr. Uppity. You're much too puffed up with your own importance. Therefore, he continued, I'm going to allow you to be turned back to your proper size. But when you get back, to big town, if you're rude to anybody, anybody at all, you will immediately shrink uh, to the size you are now. Do you understand? The goblin then took Mr. Uppity back through the kingdom of the goblins and up the staircase and out of the tree at the bottom of Mr. Uppity's garden. <coughs> the goblin looked at Mr. Uppity and said something which sounded like googly googly wolf. And Mr. Uppity grew and grew back to his original size. Now, you remember what the king said, warned the goblin. Don't you be so uppity in future. Mr. Uppity marched off furiously, up to his enormous house. The following day, Mr. Uppity was out walking through the streets of Big Town. Suddenly, he came across a little boy playing with a ball. Get out of my way, snapped Mr. Uppity rudely. But as, as soon as he'd said it, you know, you know what happened, don't you? Yes, Mr. Uppity shrank and shrank until he was no bigger than the ball the boy was playing with. Oh, dear, he gasped, and then he thought. I'm sorry, he said to the boy. What I meant to say was, please go to get past. Immediately, Mr. Uppity grew to his original size, and the boy moved, and Mr. Uppity went on his way. Then he met an old lady carrying a large shopping basket. Excuse me, she said to Mr. Uppity. 
Could you tell me the time, please? No, said Mr. Upperton rudely. But as soon as he'd said it, you know what happened, don't you? Oh, dear, he gasped, and then he thought. I'm sorry, he said to the old lady. What I meant to say was, it's 25 past 11. Immediately, Mr. Upperty grew to his original size, and the old lady thanked him, and Mr. Upperty went on his way. Then he went and bought a newspaper from a man standing on the corner of the main street in Big Town. He was just about to walk away when suddenly he stopped and thought, turned back to the man and said, Thank you. Thank you was a word Mr. Upperty had never used before. The man smiled. A smile was something Mr. Upperty wasn't used to getting. Thank you was a word Mr. Upperty not only had never used before, but it was a word he'd never had said to him before. Mr. Upperty smiled. He felt happy. Happy was, was a feeling Mr. Upperty wasn't used to feeling. <laughs> he liked it. And do you know, from that day forward to this day backward, Mr. Upperty is a changed person. He's still the richest person in Big Town, perhaps the richest person in the world. But now he has lots of friends, and he smiles a lot, and he never gets that shrinking feeling. And do you know which two words Mr. Uppity uses most of all these days? Please, and thank you. Thank you.